Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to look into Fleming's right hand rule. Now, Fleming's right hand rule helps us to figure out which way the current is going to flow inside a conductor when it passes through a magnetic field. So if you think about that, what we're discussing here is we're looking at putting movement into a machine and getting electricity out. So what does that describe? Well, obviously, it's a generator. So Fleming's right-hand rule applies to generators, and it's going to help us figure out that all-important question of which way does the current flow through the conductor as we pass it through a magnetic field. Now, in a previous video, we looked at the principle of what happens when we pass a conductor through a magnetic field using the powerful magnet that we've got on the desk here and our galvanometer as well. So we're not going to repeat that experiment, but we are going to build on that experiment to help us understand Fleming's right-hand rule in a little bit more detail. So that being the case, we'll bring the camera in, we'll pass the conductor through the magnetic field, and we'll try and figure out which way the current is flowing, and then we'll discuss Fleming's right-hand rule. So you can see here we've got our very powerful magnet on the bench, and we've got our galvanometer. So just a word on both of these. First of all, I've identified that this horn here is the north pole. So this is the north pole, that's the south pole, so that's going to be very important for understanding Fleming's right-hand rule. And our galvanometer, previously we watched the needle deflect on the video, but what we're going to do on this video is we're going to have a look in a little bit more detail about how exactly that's behaving. So if current flows in that direction, through the meter, the galvanometer will deflect that way. If the current flows in this direction through the meter, the needle will deflect in that direction. So that helps us to understand exactly what Fleming's right-hand rule is all about. So first of all, let's identify the different parts of Fleming's right-hand rule. So let's just bear in mind, if you're struggling to remember whether it's the right-hand rule or the left-hand rule, for generators, I always think of it as being Fleming's right-hand rule is for generators. That always gets a big laugh in the classroom. So let's look at this. We've got uh, our key points here. So we've got our first finger, which is the magnetic flux or field, the direction of the field. We've then got our thumb, which has the m sound at the end of it for motion or movement. And then we've got our second finger with the sound in the middle of it to represent the k -k current. So that's what we're looking at there. So if we now have a think about this, what this is telling us is that if we pass our conductor through the magnetic field in a given direction, it will generate a current that will also move in a given direction. So let's have a look at what that's going to be. So on our magnet, this is the North Pole. So we're going to indicate that the knuckle goes at the North, knuckle North, and we point to the South Pole like that. Now the first direction I'm going to move my conductor in is down through the magnetic field. So it's going to go down through the magnetic field that way, which means that our current, if Fleming's right-hand rule is correct, should flow in that direction through the conductor. So let's just prove that by experiment now. If I take my conductor and I pass it through the magnetic field, have a look at which way the needle deflects. Let's have a look. So if we pass the conductor through the magnetic field, watch the needle carefully, because it won't deflect an awfully long way. So did you see there, the needle just went that way, just a little bit, so it deflected in that direction. Now does that apply or comply with what we said about Fleming's right-hand rule? We've got the direction of the magnetic field north to south, we moved our conductor in a downwards direction, so my thumb is pointing downwards, and then the current should have flown in this direction down the conductor, so it flew this way through the galvanometer in that direction, which is why the needle deflected that way. So you can see there that Fleming's right-hand rule actually works. We can now just prove it in the other direction. So now if I move my conductor up through the magnetic field, I've still got the North Pole, knuckle north pointing to the south, but this time I'm going to move the conductor upwards. So my thumb for the movement of the conductor points upwards, which means that the current will flow in this direction through the conductor. So again, let's see if that's correct. Watch the needle carefully. So again, we might have seen that deflect just ever such a little bit in that direction, which means that the current is flowing this way through the galvanometer. So therefore, Fleming's right-hand rule holds true. Now, of course, we could also change the magnetic field around and we would find that that would affect the way that we hold our hand. But what we've proved here is that Fleming's right-hand rule works. 
Now this has been fantastic from an experimental point of view, however we also want to make sure that we're able to answer our exam questions correctly when we come to do our electrical exams. And in order to do that, we're going to have a look at what those questions might look like when they're written on your exam paper. So let's take a look at that next. So we've seen illustrated on the experiment that we did a moment ago how Fleming's right-hand rule applies to the direction of current flow. What we're going to do now is have a look at what this might look like in your exam. Now if you watch the video on Fleming's left-hand rule, then you'll know what we're looking at here. But just a quick recap, we've got bar magnets here and here. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're just going to ignore this bottom one to start with, so this is going to have no effect on what's happening up here. And you can see that we've got a North Pole and a South Pole here, and a North Pole and a South Pole here. So this is what the question might look like in your exam. You can also see here that your exam might not show you the other half of the magnet. So this bit might be missing, and this bit might be missing also. So just bear that in mind when you come to the exam, you might just see a North Pole here and a South Pole here, but the same principles apply. So bear in mind here, what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to figure out which way will the current flow inside these conductors. So here, we've got a conductor that is being passed through a magnetic field, and it's going to be passing in this direction. So that conductor, which we've got a cross section of there, is passing through the magnetic field in a downwards direction. Oh, let's get our hands in position. So here is the way that we hold our hands for Fleming's right hand rule. You can see there you sort of make that kind of J shape with your finger and your thumb there and then your second finger sticks out at a right angle. So each finger is at a right angle to all the others. So we know that the lines of magnetic flux go from north to south, and we've got our first finger flux, or first finger field. So that's gonna go from north to south in that direction. And then your thumb is the movement of the conductor, and in this case the conductor is moving downwards like that. So the conductor is gonna move down, okay? And what that means is that my sec finger, which represents the current flowing through the circuit, is going to be going into the board away from us. And if you'll remember from a previous video in our series on magnets and magnetism, you'll know that that represents a cross like that, indicates that the current is going away from us, much like the flight of a dart. If you throw a dart away from yourself, you'll see the flight going away like that. So let's have a little look at what happens now when we reverse the magnetic field. So here now, we've got lines of magnetic flux going from north to south in this direction. We'll still say that we are moving the conductor downwards. So the conductor is going to be moving in a downwards fashion. And that means now I need to move around because here I need to point from north to south with my forefinger. So knuckle at the north pole, pointing towards the south pole, my thumb indicates the direction of movement of the conductor, which is going to be going down that way. And then our second finger represents the current flow, which is coming towards us. So we represent that with a little dot inside the conductor there. So you can see that by changing the direction of the magnetic field around, we've changed the direction of the current flow. What do you think is going to happen when we change the direction of the motion of the conductors? Well, we'll have a look at that next. So you can see here, we've reset the board. We've now got our magnetic fields as they were. And what we're going to change this time is we're going to move the conductors upwards like that. So again, we've got lines of magnetic flux. We'll be going from north to south. So I need to stand over this side and point from north to south with my knuckle at the north pole. My thumb indicates the direction of movement or motion of the conductor, they've both got the m sound in there. And then the current, represented by our second finger, is going to be coming towards us in this case. So you'll remember from a moment ago that this had a dot, uh, had a cross in it a moment ago, and now we're gonna put a dot in there to indicate the current flowing towards us out of the board. So there you go, we've got there, uh, having changed the motion of the conductor, we've changed the direction of the current flow through that conductor. Let's have a look now at what happens when we move the bottom conductor upwards like that. So again, if I stand over this side, you can see we've got lines of magnetic flux going from north to south. So my first finger flux or first finger field, all starting with an F. I put my knuckle at the north and I point to the south pole. And then my thumb 
indicates the direction of motion or movement of the conductor. And therefore my second finger is pointing into the board, which means that the current must be going away from us in that direction. And that's what we've got going on there. And you'll see how that corresponds to what we looked at earlier on when we had the magnet and the galvanometer out on the table. So hopefully from this video, we've seen that Fleming's right hand rule helps us to figure out which way the current is going to flow in a conductor when we pass it through a magnetic field. This will help us to understand a little bit better how generators work and things like that. And also hopefully we'll have a much better understanding of these type of questions for when we take our exams. So all that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.